Professional Muslims Omar Seka, Chairman of the Cardi Appeals Panel, believe the Capacity Enhancement Forum will positively contribute to justice delivery in the Cardi system. Nelson in the Constitution of the Gambia, 137, subsection 6, where any party coming to the Cardi Court has a right to be represented by a person qualified in Shire. This column was a barrier for many lawyers. Justice Marie Sen for her part extolled the Female Lawyers Association of the Gambia for being strategic partners of the judiciary. She opined that the complementary work of the bar and the judiciary will serve to advance justice delivery in the country. Parties that come before the Cardi Court are also entitled to legal representation. But the, part, the person who is supposed to represent them must have knowledge in Sharia. And this is where the problem lies. And this is where FLAG has come in with the support of the British High Commission. And we commend FLAG's efforts. This particular project is particularly uh, attractive to us because, of course, the multiplier effect means that a great many more people are going to be helped in due course um, once the training has taken place. And it, we're particularly keen to help women and children. Uh, so in a number of ways, we really are delighted to be associated with this, uh, this great initiative. Dr. Omar, your Deputy Vice Chancellor, UTG, is one of the resource persons at the training. Make a difference to inculcate those values substantively and procedurally to capacitize female lawyers who are doing a good job in definitely justice delivery, not only that, but to help women in this country. This training for members of the Female Lawyers Association of the Gambia is envisaged to address issues confronting family issues bordering on marriage, divorce, and inheritance, just to name a few. Babakar Kamara, GRTS. The Suleiman Junkung General Hospital in Piam has received a donation of vital medical equipment worth about $1.5 million. The items were provided by Biam native Ansuman Aswa and his wife under the aegis of a German-based charity. We have details in this report by Samuel Ba. Many like Ansuman Aswa have left Gambian shores in search of greener pastures. But when it all appears rosy in those foreign lands, very few would look back to stretch out a helping hand. But this is not the case with Antoine Aswa, who left home to make ends meet many years ago. A native of Buyam Kankuntu, he seems to know exactly the health needs his community is grappling with, as he donates beds, wheelchairs, and crutches, water coolers with filters, carriers, and walking sticks. I want to urge Gambians in the diaspora to please emulate what Antoine have done. And when we do so, there is a lot we can attain. There is a lot we can do for the health sector. There is a lot we can do for the educational sector. There is a lot we can do for the sports sector. You name it. The Gambia German Charitable Organization is currently led by the likes of Antumana, among other Gambians, with the sole objective of contributing to nation building. One man that dedicated his time and energy in facilitating the donation of the items is Pa Usman Bojang of KGI. The sole concept of this charity and Friends of the Gambia is to raise funds to complement the effort of the government of the Republic of the Gambia in the health care system, the school system, and guarding program for schools and villages in the Gambia. Speaker after speaker applauded the philanthropic gesture which they say will beef up ongoing efforts in health service delivery. This novel coming from an area travel in the water wall to look for greener pasture and in turn you reflect back home for me i see it as a noble gesture and the coming of these items is timely and will facilitate the works of the staffs of the hospitals development requires concerted effort as the Alkali people said, there's no single government in this country, in this world, that can create everything, provide everything for her citizens. It requires every patriotic citizen to play out your role, and this is what Mr. Suwa has exactly done.
for a hospital with an admission ratio of about 150,000 patients annually. Officials are grateful for such a gesture as they pledge on a loyal commitment to service. SDG serves a population of about 150,000 inhabitants, including not only the length and breadth of the Fonis, but also the Kasamas and other regions of the Gambia, such as people coming from all the way from the Combos and even as far as Mandinaba in the lower river, the lower river region. Only Answana can tell the challenges and hitches that he has faced in Germany to gather these things. Hospital facilities were also inspected by the team. Samuel Ba, GRTS. You can monitor GRTS Radio Live on our website at www.grts.gm. That takes us to our first break. We'll be right back. Is cash to be won this month. Afrocell is offering five hundred thousand dollars worth of cash prizes for the subscribers that registered their lines. You heard me right. Win over five hundred thousand dollars worth of cash prizes with the Afrocell register and win promotion. What? Scratch and win? It's register and win five hundred thousand dollars cash. Wow. $500,000 is for simply registering my Afrisol line? That's right. Hurry up and register your Afrisol SIM card now and stand the chance of winning $500,000 is cash. Every Friday, five lucky Afrisol subscribers who have correctly registered their Afrisol lines will win through a live draw on GRTS TV. Hey. You can register your Afrisol SIM card at any Afrisol customer care outlet or service center or at any of the Afrisol registration points spread all over the country. Register your Afrisol line now to avoid disconnection and win $500,000 is cash with the Afrisol register and win promotion. Welcome back. Thousands of Christians in the Democratic Republic of Congo have been marching in the streets of the country's capital demanding an end to the war in the eastern part of that country. The protest action, which is in response to call made by bishops in Kinshasa, is the first such rally allowed by the Kabila government since last November's election campaign. We have more in this report. Thousands of Congolese Catholics responded to calls from archbishops in Kinshasa and around the country to protest against the war. Marchers set out from their parishes carrying Bibles, singing and praying for the end of the war in North Kivu, where a group of rebels called M23 are on the point of capturing the city of Goma. We want an end to the war in the east and an end to the pillaging of our resources. We also want to put an end to this Machiavellian plan to balkanize the country. We were led to believe that if Mobutu left power, it would be to the country's benefit, but I believe the process made the country more vulnerable and our borders more porous. We don't own this country anymore. Marches of hope were held in coordination around the country. Turnout was particularly strong in Bukavu, the main city in South Kivu. Here, residents have had a lot of painful experience of the numerous wars that have taken place in North and South Kivu. They refuse to hear of any talk of their regions succeeding. We must not follow South Sudan's example because those people were in favor of balkanization. In our case, it is foreign powers, our neighbors, who want to balkanize the Congo. This is the first time the Kinshasa government has authorized rallies such as this one since the last election campaign in November 2011. Last December, violence was used against Christian demonstrators protesting against electoral fraud. Mali's interim president, John Kunda Traole, has had his first cabinet meeting since his return to the country six days ago. Like a man making up for last time, the interim president vowed to put the country back on track. He has been busy holding talks with the major players in Malian politics as part of efforts to form a government of national unity. Details in this report. It was Diakunda Traore's first ministerial meeting since his return to Mali six days ago. There was a tense face-to-face -face meeting with his prime minister, Sheikh Modibo Diara. Then there was a brief session with his ministers. The interim president left the meeting early. We have to hurry. We have to put this country back on track for good. 
For the past three days, Terari has been holding meeting after meeting trying to force